right, we're back. We're back. AEZ in the house. The boys. What a week. What a week we've had. So many talking points that we're going to be all over the board today. But first, let's get through. Meet the boys. We got Justin. Hello, everybody. Um, I want to start this by reciting a poem. Um, when I win the Rumble, I'll finally show respect to this place. I'll walk right to the Rocky statue and I'll spit right in its face. That's for my homie Elias. As we know, we've got some releases. We're going to get that, but let's pump it over. Tank! What's going on, boys? How's everybody doing? We're alive. We're alive. Then we go down to the man with the plan, with the glasses on his face. It's Breezy! What's going on, boys? I had to rep for my boy Adam Cole. We'll get into it later. Hope his ankle's okay. We didn't even plan that, Dusty. It's just two minds, baby. Yeah. Uh, hell of a weekend. Neil was fucking awesome. I'm sure we'll get into that, too. And then we got... Oorah, the wrestling guy. Oorah. Hey, everybody. Hope everyone had a good week. Uh, I'm excited to talk about wrestling. Yes. Big week. Yes. Let's go, boys. So we start off. Uh, we're doing things a little different this week. Seems like that's my my slogan. I have that every week. But uh, something happened on our normal scheduled record. I got stuck on a highway, uh, blew my trans uh, transmission on the Skyway in Burlington, which is one of the busiest highways in North America. And it was clogged. I was there for, I'd say, about seven hours before I got cleared. But... Mm -hmm. Ended up having to reschedule. We're all here. We're all happy. Kind of good because now we are going to hit Grand Slam and we can talk about something that just hit today. That is na 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 na. Hey, hey, hey. Goodbye. Yes, the boys have been released. We get lists. Um, and the girls. And some of the ladies that I actually. <laughs> I'm going to be excited to see. I'm sure we will get uh, Leah back in Toronto. But if we go through the list real quickly, I'm going to hit some of the big ones. Number one, let's talk Dolph. Dolph Ziggler, Nick Nemeth is free. Free at last. Free at last. Let's go, Dolph. And uh, Ryan is like really tight with the Bucks and uh, Elite in particular. And I would love to see them as a tag team personally because I think Ryan is hilarious on being the elite. And I would like to see him get an actual push. And I know I say this almost every show, but once again, Loki, one of the best entrance songs in wrestling. I I thought about this right away. I saw uh, Ryan on the cruise and he was did a one-man comedy show. It put me over on him. And I get that. How can you push the same character? But he has the same character as his brother, the Hollywood hunk. Now it's the Hollywood hunks. You put them together. Just imagine the way they work such a similar style in ring. I really get excited by this. I know, Breezy, you want to see him on a main event push. What do you think? I, I mean, just uh, mentioning Ryan there. I've been high on Ryan ever since uh, he first started on BTE. I mean, sometimes he steals those episodes weekly. He's unbelievable. But even the the subtle hints that he would make at uh, at his brother on BTE, I'd be like, man, can you imagine? What if? What if? I've never said this, boys, about anybody that's actually been released or when it's come to D-Day on release day in the Fed. But if there's anybody main event ready, to just walk from WWE straight to AEW, straight to the main event, it's Dolph Ziggler. Why wouldn't it be? The man's done literally everything that there is to do in the business, and he eats shit with a smile. I, I think he deserves it. And the matches, just the fantasy booking that I'm doing in here, you talk about their next big pay-per-view, Wrestle Dream. I've got so many dream matches for Dolph. I can't even fathom the possibility. Give us your favorite. Give us your favorite. Yeah. It's Dolph Ziggler and Jay White. Jay White, eh? Nice. 
Yeah. I, I heard I heard he has a killer elbow drop too. Let me when it's repeated. My bad drumming. Damn. Oh wow. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, but you know what to your point to let him have a singles run and see Ryan and the tag team for down the road. Uh I think you go tag, get your brother over, you get to break up, you get to like this is something we're gonna watch. We're gonna be forced to watch Nick and Ryan together because we're gonna watch it. The minute he shows up and he's got his brother as a tag team partner and they come out, we're gonna be watching. His brother's his brother's young though, right? You you gotta strike while the iron's hot. Right his brother's now. forty years old. His brother ain't that young. Everybody's talking so, so. about golf right now. Strike while well, the iron's hot. Go into the big money matches that AEW can produce, especially just coming off of losing Punk. So you lost Punk. You want to get everybody off of that talking point. What better way than to bring Dolph in? Now, I want to play on the one match that if we are talking main event matches, I want to talk about the one that would really I'm thinking about. And I'm thinking about Dolph Ziggler. And Chris Jericho. No, no, I love it. I love it, and I always do. But I'm looking at Orange Cassidy here. Yes, Ooh. yes. Ooh. Okay. Talk about an entertainment level between the two. I think we could really get that. As we go through the list, let's go over to Drummond. How do you feel about the release of Elias? I mean, it's upsetting. I love Elias. Um, it's I'm Kevin. I mean, I just want to point out that Kevin Owens is right because he tweeted that. Ezekiel was his brother, so Kevin Owens was right all along. Um, I mean, I really like Elias. I, I think I mean, the only real spot for him is Impact. Um, I can't really see him anywhere else. Or maybe he just becomes a musician because we don't talk about how good of a voice he actually has for like the folk music stuff. So maybe parlays it into a music career legitimately. I'm going to give the next music. guy. I want to give the next guy to Urai because I've we've had conversations about him in the past and I like his uh, input. So we're going Mustafa Ali. Uh, I'm really surprised that he got released when he has a pay-per-view match next weekend. Had. 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 <laughs> Accurate. Had. Um, and make lemonade. I, 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 I don't... I mean, I get why he's on the list, but I don't get why now, when he had duh, uh, a, a pay-per-view match on <laughs> next Saturday. Uh, I'm really confused now because they were going to do Dragon Lee and Dominic Mysterio on Raw, so do they do a Schmoz finish now and carry that to No Mercy? Yeah, um, maybe, maybe a backstage and then do don't they, even match. One thing I, I, I do want and this is not to snub, to snub Mustafa Ali, because I like Mustafa Ali. Uh, but with Shelton Benjamin also gone, I kind of hope they put Cedric in that spot. Not right away, maybe in a few weeks. Because uh, I think uh, Cedric would fit really well there, and he's a really good talent. So can, we get, can we get one more run of Shelton Benjamin in New Japan? No, I have a really I have a really good idea for Shelton Benjamin. I mean, he, I mean you may. He, he's almost 50. So now's the time. Yeah. I'm just going to put it out here. Shelton Benjamin Blackpool Combat Club. But he said he's 50. You're not bringing in uh, a veteran at that point. I think he hits New Japan and has that really good. Uh, I've been here. I know these matches. I've worked these guys type attitude and just come back to the way he was and have fun with it. That's how I would want to see him go out. Uh, a couple more people. We got Monsoor. I'm only bringing him up because I just watched his uh, video on Twitter. And uh, I would go and check it out. He's funny, entertaining. Very I charismatic. Actually, yes, I wouldn't be mad. Like, if he came into town, I'd, I'd think about going to see him. He's the one that kind of shocked me the most because he's not even 30 years old yet. And he had a lot of potential. We got Shanky gone. I know that one hurts. Oh, yeah. They didn't hurt Brett Lauderdale. Oh, we lost Emma, Dana Brooke. I mean, they can go to Impact and have some bangers. I was gonna say, could uh, AEW use Emma? 
Uh, they could. They had a chance to sign her. Be- well, I mean, they had a chance to sign her before, and they didn't. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, why not? Does she, she go where Red Moss goes, though? Do they go to the same place? That would be Rick Moss. So here's my thing with Riddick Moss. I read an interview recently where he said um, that Vince liked him because of his mat because he can make people laugh or whatever, and then made a comment about not taking anything too seriously because it's just wrestling. I wonder if that hurt him. Hmm. I, I wonder if that hurt him. Well, it seems like anything attached to Vince McMahon this day and age is going to hurt you. Did you see the stock on TKO? No, I I don't follow stocks. <laughs> it fell eighteen points. Oh, oh, that's all right. They'll pop back. So they I got just the heard, global tours. They're they're covered. I just heard that's why these releases are happening to uh, try to even out the stock. Somehow or another, I don't know how that crap works either. But well, they're they're in a lot of debt after buying WWE too, right? So trim the fat. You got to trim the fat when a new boss comes in. It's all right. It's all right. This is this is one of this is like Christmas for us because I mean. Hey, These what are guys that can be signed locally? What what's trimming yes. the fat when a, when a new boss comes in supposed to mean? No comment. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. So, do you find it weird that we get these uh, releases on the same day that they announced that they got the million the billion dollar deal with USA for SmackDown? Well, it's going to be some housekeeping. <laughs> it's good. It's good stuff. Gives people a chance. I loved what. Uh, Matt Cardona said, "Yeah, I'm gonna pull it up. Did you see this as well? Yes, yes, I did. I did, I did not. Okay, so he posted to those who were just released. This could be the end of your career, or it can be the beginning. Look yourself in the mirror and decide. I promise you, the work and the money is out there. It's not easy. It's a grind. It's a hustle. It's frustrating, but it also can be incredibly rewarding." in more ways than one if you work your fucking ass off i hope to see the lot of you down the road yeah very well said by our indie god yes so speaking of indie we are missing chops uh he's gonna take a break from this for a little bit he may come back to visit us but we're gonna continue our indie spotlights we had a damn good time down here in Niagara Falls, we all went, uh, Justin, Breezy, Zach, and me, the Niagara boys, foot, uh, boots on the streets, you know what I mean? Yeah, we were, we were just missing Tank and Matt. They got yeah, to yeah. come next time. Yeah, we'll, we'll make this happen. So we go over to Neo. Now, Neo's special. I'm going to expose something. Why is this company special? So back in the day, you start with the crew, EY, Eric Young, Cody Steele, Laz, you had it all running. Then they left and came back. So many of the talent we got to see grow in front of our eyes, and now they're at AEW, now they're in Impact, et cetera, et cetera. So our buddy, Tiberius King, is having some issues with uh, with the big C word, fuck cancer, let's tell him. So, brings back the shows. Last show was excellent. It was a homecoming. We missed it. But why is it special? Why does it matter? Justin, tell the story about your first independent wrestling show. Like ever? Oh, yeah. Well, my, my, first, my first independent wrestling show was... Definitely Neo. Um, and my first favorite indie wrestler was Crazy Steve. And yes. Crazy Steve is doing great things right now. So Breezy, first show, independent. First, Neo, Neo Spirit Pro Wrestling. I still remember it to this day. I was in high school. My uncle came home and gave me a ticket. And it was a white ticket with orange lettering. And I'm like, what is NSP? And I went to the show, and it changed my life forever. At the Niagara Falls Polish Hall, I'll never forget it. I saw I saw uh, Showtime Eric Young. I saw Notorious TID. I yeah. saw the original Hacker. I saw a badass ladder match. I mean, it was unbelievable to me. I couldn't, and I had never sat that close to an actual wrestling ring, so it'll always stay with me. So 
I traveled Canada. I've lived in so many different prom- provinces. I moved to Ontario and I'm just getting my shit together. And me and a buddy are down Main Street and we were having a beer and we were going to go to the next bar and we passed the Serbian hall and there was a lineup outside. I was like, what is it? It's Indy. I was like, okay. So I go over to the bar and I sit with my buddy and I say, let's go to this show. So we went, sat there, chanted my heart out. I, I found peace outside of the madness. When I saw the JT play a, Hit the ring, do his thing. Oh, I was into it. And then you see the same man that Justin was just talking about, Crazy Steve. The guy was a skinny, crazy man, blind as a bat, wearing a loincloth, biting people. So much fun. So that's three people whose first indie shows, and we were never friends at this point. We've never connected at that point, but it still is in the veins. So when we get the Niagara boys out to a Neo show, we get loud and we get crazy. It was an amazing show. They start off, Jesse comes out, uh, or Tiberius King, sorry, wrong guy. Look at uh, here. Tiberius King comes out, look at here. He gets attacked from behind, obviously with his treatments. He's under a lot of uh, body pressure. I, I think nobody was upset that he had to sit this one out, but he takes the attack. So there was starting with a four-way for a number one contendership with Sean Spears, all right? He's the Neo champion right now. So you get Cody Diener. Whew, what a dude. You get Tarek, Mr. Punch, Kick, Chop. And then you get Tyler Turva, Saturday Night Night Delight. Whoa, that was hard. But then, (laughs) just like he said, said, the notorious one, TID, comes out. He's the general manager, grabs the mic, says, we need one more guy. No announcement. Walking weapon shows up. Josh Alexander, the place goes unglued. So we're watching this match. And, of course, all the boys were were so screwed because we back Cody. We back Tarek. We back Josh Alexander. But, obviously, Josh is just our guy. But Tarek is that guy coming up. So we want to push him. So it's an elimination match. Then you end with Tarek and Josh. Excellent. Boom. Tarek takes the W. Now we got Tarek versus Spears in November. Let's talk about the show. How'd that match go? Breezy. I loved it. What a way to kick off the show. Unbelievable. And like you said, the whole crowd had their had their favorites. It wasn't just one guy, two guys. It was all four of the guys. And with Josh being an absolute surprise, even to us who know, you know, industry backstage guys or whatever, nobody broke kayfabe and told us that Josh was here. No. We had no fucking clue. So when that music hit, we were marking out like the rest of them. It was a good way to open the show. I mean, I feel like it set the tone yeah. for what that show actually was. And if you could hear it in my in my voice right now, boys. My voice is still hoarse from how much energy I put into that show. I've been struggling with it all week, but uh, I said I wasn't going to miss this show because I want to talk about it. And they put on one hell of an opener. And props to Tarek. He deserves it. Yes. Yes. It's Tarek's time in the Ontario Indies. He needs to be your champion in every promotion he visits. He needs his due. He has been grinding for the last 10 years that we've been watching, and it's time for that push. All right, Crazy Steve doing Crazy Steve things, has the fork, stabbing people, great stuff. We love seeing Crazy Steve, and we always pop. (coughs) This is one character. My boy Jeremy Elliott fought Daddy Davis. Justin, give me a breakdown, a character development of what is Daddy Davis. I mean, he's he's your dad. He carries a diaper bag around. He's... He has the greatest theme song in the history of professional wrestling, and he's the greatest. He's, can, he's my can favorite. Can you tell me what the theme song is? The Full House theme song. <laughs> so he's a bad guy. He's a daddy. He's a lot of fun. He's actually uh, a wrestler that's been around Neo for a while, but he's coming to his gimmick, and we're all behind it. We got to love it. Would love to see uh, Scotty Turner fit into this somehow. 
but is that we'll even a dark match on AEW of a little while ago? No, 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 no. That was uh, Zach. Help me out. Uh, Dan, uh, Dan the dad. That's Dan, that Dan the dad. I love oh, yeah, Dan the, the dad. dad, too. The dad. <laughs> Similar gimmick, uh, but definitely not the same. It's a lot of fun with Daddy Davis because he's just a heel doing heel things in this gimmick, right? Um, Shout out to uh, Jackson Jarvis too on the outside doing the recruiting. Professional. He's yep. professional. You know this, uh, Zach. Let's talk a little bit about Jesse Bieber versus Heath Slater. Uh, that was fun. Um, we were all, I, I think a lot of us were really behind uh, Jesse Bieber for a change instead of a uh, WWE guy, um, which, which was cool. Uh, it, was, it was more of a, um, like an entertainment type match. It wasn't really like wrestling specific which i think a lot of people enjoyed as well mm -hmm. uh at, at one point we almost finally got heath to to sing uh and he was about to because they were gonna do a singing contest which by the way jesse bieber killed it uh and uh and then jesse bieber attacking from behind and uh what i really liked about this match is uh normally uh when they bring in a, a wwe guy that wwe guy or whoever usually wins in this case he did not and Jesse Bieber got the big win right before he headed to Montreal for the Jacques Rougeau camp. Oof. I kind of want to talk about it. It's a little funky. This camp caused some controversy, eh? Oh, did, did it? Yes. Yeah, so, um, Case uh, Spinelli, Casey Spinelli. So, two the, the finals. Were her versus I think it was Von Dutch the girl uh, Von Lee, Leah Von Dutch. Thank you. And at the end of their match, they were told that there would be a ten thousand dollar prize as well as the Nightmare Factory thing, and they wanted them to split it. And Casey Spinelli said no. It shouldn't be split. There should be one winner. This was what it was made for. And Jacques Rougeau made a statement towards um, when you have 50 male competitors and two of them split a prize and you have 10 women, why wouldn't they be able to split as well? It's But there's a little bit of beef. I saw it. Uh, it was actually on coverage on a CTV news broadcast too. Wow. That's the big wigs here in Canada. How, how <laughs> dare you go against the Mountie? He always gets his man or woman. Oh. So we'll keep our you? eye on that. Either way, all in all, the India is where it's at. We love supporting our boys. We got to hang out with them, see a lot of pitchers come out. Man, it was a fun show. We're going to continue going to Indies. We're going to continue talking about it. I got to talk to Heath about Slater Gator. Oh, nice. Yes. Um, in the end, this one is for my man, Tiberius King. Get better soon. I want to see you in the ring. Shout out Robin Carey in the drunk section. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's our Shout out Sam. Sam. And shout out, shout out Sam. Oh, we will shout out Sam. Shout out Sam's, Sam's wife. wife. He's going to have to start being a viewer. Sure. All right. That's our indie spotlight. I'm going to break it down a touch. As we left the air on last week's episode, Urai told me, just wait till you watch the Dragonov wesley match. All right, pause. NXT. They averaged over 800K in their entire show. The Bex match went over a million viewers. I watched it, and I'll tell you, I liked the Bex match. It was it was a well done match. Uh, I think you can listen to Bully Ray, and he'll gush enough about it that it gets coverage. But the match that I need to talk about is that Wesley Dragonov match. I wanted to give it the solo banger of the week, but we had another match that really blew my mind. But let's start with. The kicks to Dragonov's uh, face from Wesley. 
He hit him with like four to five kicks, each kick different. The one square on the button. Oh my God, Dragunov's good. And I hope he goes to the moon. He's one of those guys you can't not love. Why does it get a tie for banger of the week? Because Will Ospreay and Mara Fuji. I haven't watched that yet. Please do. I won't break down anything for you. It was hard hitting. It was fun. Mary Fuji's been there so long that it's a shame that I've only really learned about him over the last three years. So knowing that there's so much history, I like grabbing one every once in a while, but I had to tune in for an Osprey Mara Fuji and it was well worth it. Those are the bangers of the week. I don't know if Dragonoff can go to the moon, considering Cameron Grimes is already going there. Oh, <laughs> wow. This just in, Cameron Guy Grimes and Dragonoff released. Don't even joke about <laughs> Cameron Grimes being released. I, be, I, 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 I kind of thought Cameron Grimes was going to be on that list. Jeez. I'll rage. I will lose it if he gets released, too. I like how you brought up a list. Hey. That's where I want to go next. Hey. Pro Wrestling Illustrated released their top 500. I love this list. There's a part of me that gets excited for it in wrestling. I go immediately top 10, then I scan right to 500. I never go down <laughs> further. I want the build, okay? You start with so many guys you don't even know. But then you go, oh my God, there's one of our dudes. And it felt like that throughout. We saw Tarek on there. We saw some of the, the boys in our area that we love to see. But then you get up there and you notice that there's a couple holes. I Nido wasn't on the list. That was a mistake. Obviously, number 500 gets moved down around the 20s. I think Nido can hit it. A G1 winner, it kind of registers there, yeah? Yeah. But then you look at the top yeah. 10. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I would put it in, boys, for the top three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll take one, two, and three. Yep. Seth being the realistic number one. I'm not mad at Seth getting it. I'm not. No. Workhorse. I I don't understand Cody being there as he only had a half a year to register. But Cody had to be there. But what a half like, a year he had. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's definitely here's the question though. He had a better half year in a half a year than Roman did the full year. Yes, storytelling and drama, but match wise, am I wrong? Uh, I think uh, he'd be on par. Roman had some good matches, man. Matches, match quality. Match quality it doesn't uh, match quality doesn't really count for that. It people don't realize a lot of that is it's win. Wins, belts, uh, type of competitors they face. And I was very, very, very happy because if he wasn't on the list, I would have been blue in the face. Orange Cassidy. I still loved his run with the title because every week he was giving us banger after banger after banger. And it only hit me at like, I'd say swerve that this run has been one hell of a run and he made that title we'll get to that title later i i, I disagree a little bit but yeah i get what you're saying i i feel maybe you should call an audible and just talk about it now oh no 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 we're holding this we need to eat that one up no oh, he didn't get it boys i said call an audible uh uh little double on times are there did they though? Yeah. We're we'll we'll break that down in a bit, guys. Let's go back. Josh Alexander made the list. Yes. Yes. And more fucking yes. Our boy, Josh Alexander, made top ten. I was so bloody proud because we watched the whole damn journey. I, I, we said it to him at the show. It was I was there for some of the journey. 
We were live. We were live this. when he got signed to Impact. We were in the Don Koloff Arena when when Scott Demore signed him. For God's sakes, I refereed a match yet outside of a Taco Bell one time. <laughs> yeah, you did. I uh, I I'm always down for the list. I get to we get to talk about it. We get to argue about it. We want guys higher. We want guys lower. We would change our list. It's all subjective, but it's fun to have there. Another thing that's fun to have there. Smackdown. If you smell what The Rock is cooking. Oh, my God. I, I open up my phone. Normally, for uh, Saturday morning is Rampage with the kids. But I saw The Rock all over. I turned off my phone. I put SmackDown on right away. The pop, the pop was so good, but as Urai pointed out, it only gets better. When he comes out, they get louder. Then he gets in the ring, they calm down, but then they get louder. He gets a mic, they get louder. He had them in the palm of his hand as if we were 15 again or younger for the younger guys. Urai, how'd you feel about seeing Dwayne the Rock Johnson get in the ring? I loved it. I loved everything about it. I um my favorite one of my favorite parts is when Pat tried to tell him the show's only two hours. He's like, I know it's only two hours. And then he kind of kept doing it. Yes. Um you know, um anytime that you can get you, you can get someone like that in there for you know for, for 20 minutes, even if even if they're just talking, it, it's fun, it's nostalgic. The, there's nothing wrong with nostalgia when it's done right. And when someone's getting a rub off of it and I think it checked all those boxes, Austin theory definitely got a rub off of it. Clearly. I, I know a lot of people kind of, kind of crap on, on triple H's booking of, of theory because for some reason they think he's not a triple H guy, even though triple H signed him. Uh, and clearly they think big things of him because I mean, Within the last couple of years, he's been in there with. They've trusted him being in there with Vince. They've trusted him being in there with McAfee. They've trusted him being in there with Austin, and now they trust him being in there with with The Rock. Um, so you know, just because he maybe didn't have the best U.S. title run, or just because he cashed in his money in the bank on the U.S. title, it doesn't mean that he's not viewed at a, as at a certain level. Uh, but I love the whole segment. There was, in my opinion, nothing wrong with it. It was awesome. The crowd went nuts for the rock, um, as they should. Why, why wouldn't you? And uh, I hope, uh, you know, maybe not right away, but I hope down the line we see a little more of, uh, of the Brahma Bull. Okay, so talking about that, watching the busted open, I don't know if any of you caught. What's the, what's my host's name? Dave LaGreca. Dave LaGreca snaps on the rock. He's, the rock he's worried he's going to... Yeah, and, or he's talking, and he says that at 39, it should have been Roman versus him, but things didn't work out. And Dave LaGreca makes a good point, but just opening his mouth and mentioning that kind of blows Cody's story that he's been building out of the water and shits all over the business. Obviously, Mark Henry can argue and Bully can say what he wants, but it's not a bad idea on thought process to have like Cody being backstaged over the rock really is a big deal. I mean, if you push for a rock and Roman at 40, what does that do for everything Cody's been building? Well, here's my thing. Cause I mean, the rock made a comment that it, that it was locked in for 39. Um, when to, what we don't know when they were talking to the rock about 39 we don't know when those talks started so what if like cody tore his peck and they didn't know when he was going to be back and it just turned out that he was back in the nick of time i guess um, that's you know he had to be in the room so like i don't understand why why like i get what lebrecht is saying and i'm not I, I'm not a hundred percent like disagreeing with it, but at the same time, like you ain't there, Dave. Like you don't know the thought process of what was going on. 
and you don't. So, I mean, I can't, you know, you can't really talk to that kind of stuff. It's, it's, I get what he's saying and, and, and I, and I agree with some of it, but you can't, you can't get mad about that stuff because you don't know what happened. We don't know what happened. Uh, I, I think for 40, uh, if they end up doing Roman and, and rock, um, I, I almost think you, you got to have Roman wrestle twice. Um, because I, I do think Cody should, should get it, uh, this, like this coming year. Uh, and I don't think he should be beating Seth Ford. I think he should be beating Roman. I actually love what you just said because it's Roman Reigns. He's in the top three on the PWI. He is Roman Reigns. They've made him this God of wrestling. Why can't he have a back to back? Um, you do two storylines makes Roman stronger for appearing in both and main eventing both. I mean, some people might be mad, but getting the belts on Cody the first night makes it look good. Then getting the rock versus reigns for the true head of the table. It looks good. It makes, I would have to watch for the first time since they started doing two shows. I'd have to watch a piece of both. So I gotta agree. Let's run over to AEW, boys. I'm going to run through a lot of it because a lot of it builds for Grand Slam. And since we're going to be talking about that, I don't want to pull from the other shows. But Mox versus Big Bill, normally we shit on Moxley's blood. But when Big Bill was hitting him with those boots and the blood was splattering, I'm telling you, I enjoyed this match. Uh, I really thought the blood actually was done right and it makes me confused why he does it so much when he can do it right but moving on uh we had the conversation couldn't really get to the bottom i think me and breezy were like no he's targeting his next person joining the family i think we were dream wishing because he explains that no he's gonna be targeting someone and i believe you called it tank Myself and well, I called even the person, but uh, I believe Justin and Uri were also. I, I called it was going to be yeah. It was it was an actual target, not a new member. Yeah. Uh, this whole spot was done shitty. I mean, just the timing of everything. Uh, <laughs> the the sprinklers go off. The name change. I uh, just uh, whatever. Um, but he's going after Coda and Kanoska versus Coda. I don't care. I'm gonna love it. We go over to the main event because this was something that we had to see. We've been talking about it for weeks. I was kind of disappointed in the finish, but it was Samoa Joe versus Roddy Strong. Next strong, not so strong. Um, the match was damn good. Outside of it, I think the right man won, but I don't think it's over. I think he'll find a way to MJF. Um, how did everybody feel about knowing that it's Joe versus MJF at Grand Slam? I was fine with it. I was fine with, with, with uh, either way that they went with it. Because, I mean, last week before we knew what they were going to do with MJF at Wrestle Dream, we kind of thought one was going to get the Grand Slam shot and one was going to get the shot at Wrestle Dream. But I think it prolongs the uh, the storyline with, with Roddy and Adam Cole and MJF. And um, there's nothing wrong with that. Long stories in wrestling are fun. Right. That man needs to mute when he walks away. Um, we jump into Rampage for one spot. It was the Jade Goodbye. Uh, Jade versus Statlander. Uh, proper send-off. I think it was the right thing to do to have the match and take your L and move on. I'm not... At first, I was mad that Jade's going. But I'm I'm okay with it. The more... Like, when we hear of Dolph Ziggler being gone and we're thinking of all of these dream matches, when we think of Jade going to WWE, we can have that same thought. I think this was the first bridge that actually outside of Cody, because Cody hurt, but made me watch, Jade is that peaceful movement. I wasn't mad at how they did it. It made me watch Rampage for that. 
We'll see what Jade does on the Fed side of things. And stat stays champ. Who's playing Mario? I might play. Sorry, my uh, phone rang. Now you got me feeling nostalgic and wanting to play. <laughs> we jump over to Collision, which was a banger of a show. Uh, FTR versus Iron Savages. Uri, am I alone or do you miss Bear Country? Like the name Bear Country? No, oh, the gimmick, the the whole thing. Because, I mean, other than, than their manager, like, that that gimmick really hasn't changed, but, but but I love the I love the name Bear Country. But they're stealing halal beefcakes uh, gimmick. Yeah, I mean, but I yeah, I mean the the one guy lost a ton of weight, um, like a ton of weight. Um, but I mean, who? I mean, no one really knows that it's halal beefcakes gimmick, un un unless you're us. But that means someone knows because we are us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, but is, are they stealing how all beefcakes gimmick, or are they stealing Simon Dean's gimmick? Um, I never know. thought we'd have a day that Simon Dean comes up. Well, I mean, th th there's been a lot of gimmicks that that, that are generally are, that are generally the same, right? Yes. So I don't well, think they're necessarily fair. stealing halal beefcakes gimmick, but I I do miss I do miss Bear Country. Now I just really enjoy the fact that you said halal beefcake. I think we've got 10 times on our show. So, yeah. Let's get yeah. them booked again. Halal Beefcake. Yeah. We move it down the line to Silver as a heel. What are we feeling on this Dark Order heel turn? Well, flash. I find so far. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, think they're too, I think they're too likable. I don't know. I think John Johnny Silver is too too likable. It's throwing me off. I don't know if I like it. I, I but you're you're gonna watch. You're gonna want to see what happens, right? Exactly. He's, he's doing I, I, what I he's doing. Either way, he has a match against. I believe it was Bowens. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he says, "I googled scissoring, and you guys are doing it wrong." That killed me. <laughs> I I silver doing silver things. My God, I, I don't. I think the problem with the heel turn is that it came like don't like they didn't really have an actual official heel turn, and no one gets it. They they had that that big feud with with the righteous and um and Ring of Honor, and then all of a sudden they they won as baby faces, and then like they turned that they started being more aggressive. And they started kind of acting it's healing. It's because Hangman chose the elite over them. That's that's where it stems from. Uh, I don't. Hmm. Yeah, that's where it stems from. They got betrayed but, by their best friend, so now they don't want to Hangman, trust any other outsiders outside of their actual. Target. But Hangman chose. But Hangman didn't or just them I mean, before they turned heel. They they were still baby faces for a bit. After, if, if it happened right after that, okay. But, but they kept taking L's. They kept taking losses as we lose Breezy. Uh, we look over to a match that I thought was fire. Urai, please talk about Scorpio Sky versus Andrade. Um, I liked it. I liked that those guys had a match against each other. Um, I liked that they got on TV. Uh, I think they were both. I don't know about Andrade, but I know I read that Scorpio Sky was, and they referenced to him being injured. Um, but I thought that, yeah, I like that they were on TV. I like seeing those guys. Like I like seeing guys that aren't on TV on TV for a change. Uh, I thought it was a good match. Um, I'm digging the Andrade Jay White thing, and I'm excited for it. Yes, yes. Bang bang gang talk. It does sound good. It's going to be interesting as there's so many members. I don't know what Andrade could do. I mean, he was scouting the Lucha, uh, the Lucha Underground clan that show, but um, he's got family there with Roosh. I, I just want something to come through on that. Isn't he in those Faction Mingo Vernables? Yeah, he, he built it. I kept waiting for somebody. Opera invented it, man. 
it's weird because he's like not like he's a baby face and they're heels and they're not like together. Yeah. So it's but like but then you it's kind of in the back of your mind. Yep. And you kind of thought and, and you kind of thought that's where they were going with the trios titles. And then they went to the acclaimed. Yeah. So I, I don't I, I don't know. But I, I will say I really want Roosh back on TV. In the main event, Statlander fights DMD. Pretty darn good match. I was all right with it. Um, Stat's really getting her spots and her pushes. Uh, I really think they're putting the flag on her right now and they're forcing it. I I would like to see it be successful. I think I need her to have some character. I mean, look what Tony's doing with nothing. Now, we will get to Tony. Let's hold off on her. But it was the end of the, ma- the show. Uh, then you end up getting a Monday and Raw happened. All right, so then we go to Dynamite Grand Slam. Big show. Big show. Arthur Ashe, Eddie versus Claudio, New Japan Strong Champ, Ring of Honor World Champ, winner gets both. Tank, did you watch? I did. And? And uh, I love it, man. I was always a big Claudio fan. I still find like an AEW, like charisma-wise, it feels a little flat. But I think they actually like alluded to it during this particular um, feud and a couple of promos specifically. So I think uh, Claudio scales it back a little bit to play into it. Um, in ring, he's fantastic. When he gets hot, he gets hot. It's like, obviously, this isn't a tag match, but he's got such a fantastic hot tag, it's hard like not to break up. Obviously, one of the best European hot uppercuts in the game. And I love Eddie. We talked about it in the past. So glad to see him get his view. I kind of wanted to see his mom in the audience because they're at home and all that. And I know it can get a little cheesy and all that stuff. But he's said in the past in promo work, like the reason why you don't have a grandson or a granddaughter is because of the belt. And I need to get a heavyweight championship belt kind of thing. So I thought that might have been a nice little moment if Eddie could have had that. But yeah. I can't remember uh, where the bump came, if it was this match or the other one, because I watched it recently, and I got a little uh, confused with the the bump on the apron, where where Eddie takes it sideways. Oh, my God. I was legitimately worried when he hit the ground. Do you feel they played a little bit of a shoot at a point? Well, I think like the whole thing is a uh, shoot turned into a work, right? So, uh, yeah, I think they did, they did for sure. I think uh, we've seen this match, and every time I've seen it, I I wanted it to be something else. But watching this one, it was everything I needed. It was the like hard the, uh, story, story. I'm so horrible at that. I apologize a thousand times. But any ending in the powerbomb I thought was also awesome. A nice little little well on the story there yes eating the rico bomb so many times he finally gets his comeuppance and uh and gets him with a, a power bomb of his own it was hard to give away my banger of the weeks when this show came on because i think three or four of the matches i could have put there uh we're happy to see eddie with some titles he deserves the gold I want to see him working everywhere. I want him to get a uh, every week match push like uh, Orange had and just get him against people and show it. Show okay. why he's the champ and show why he's such a badass. I think since Chikara, this is probably his first anyway belt, isn't it? Yeah, That's it is his first world title. Yes. So... Yeah. We're all happy. We're applauding. And I don't think either guy goes down as a loss because they both took some ass whoopings. No, Go to was, the next match, good. which I'm taking the lead on because it's a Jericho match. 
Jericho and Sammy, the match itself was sound. I popped cutters, the um, code breaker. There were so many good pieces that you know they've been planning in their heads what they're going to do for a while. And then we get to the end. Drummond smiling already. No, I actually have something else to say before I. I don't know if Ure, Ure, Ure wants to say it or I want to say it. We talked about it, but I actually think that match was very, very sloppy, and wasn't. Yeah, it, it was not. It, it was good, but it was not sound. Oh, I, I, I have Jericho a problem. There's a bias the that breaks it. Jer Jericho tripped when Sammy flipped over him, and then there was another spot. Oh, you mean when? Uh, he went to do the lion salt and he was like three feet off. So Sam yeah. was in the way to make sure I would like yeah. to say camera production. Well, I, 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 I don't think there, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with camera production when Jericho falls. Yeah. But don't show it. And you wouldn't have known, but you, ha but they didn't know that was going to happen. You can't blame them There's more that. stuff. They didn't know that happened on this pay-per-view. They didn't know what to do. Let's give them a loan. <laughs> But no, other than than the two or three slip ups, the match was fine. I didn't have any issues with with it, other than those two spots. And then the ending, we get a wink and a nod to one of Jericho's all time heroes, Shawn Michaels. I believe WrestleMania nineteen was that right? Yep. 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 They hit it frame for frame, and it's so smooth for story if you think about it. Jericho's idol kicks him in the nuts. Sammy's guy kicks him in the nuts. And then we get Callus out. I don't know how I feel about Callus because he's been stale with Kanosuke, and I don't know what's going on a lot of the time. But let's see what happens. Sammy, Sammy can be led. Sammy can take the mic. He's gone heel. Let's see what happens. Jericho's alone. I did like the stare down with Danny Garcia. Yeah. Did I you catch the gear thing? Huh? Did you catch the Sammy gear thing? Yeah, the gear. Sammy's gear yeah. was a homage to uh, what what Jericho was wearing in that match. The yeah. blue with the gold trim. I but didn't like catch that. Tight. And th they made reference to it on commentary as well. Um, I, I didn't like that Sammy turned. It works. It, it, needed when, a guy. it 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 doesn't you he just turned yeah whatever you can't you can't because <laughs> the thing is is eventually sammy's gonna be a baby face and if you flip flop him too much like they've been doing no one's gonna care well when somebody turns out of the blue like this and we have these conversations i find it usually gets explained the next week it's true but uh, I, I had no problem with it. I kind of, I have popped. I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed it. Because uh, I wasn't, I love, I love swerves. And I honestly wasn't thinking about Sammy whatsoever to join that group. So, uh, yeah, I personally didn't mind it whatsoever. And I like the idea of him with, uh, with the two of them. But like you're saying, now for sure, especially since JAS, you got to keep Danny uh, Garcia away from him. And I love him with uh, 2.0 over there. Yes. And they actually had a match where they had a promo where they said, uh, this is where we come from. We always stay together. When everything else fails, we come back to the three of us, blah, blah, blah. So they even kind of like set that up to be a thing. So to pull Danny from that situation, I would be stupid all over again. And why I keep saying Danny instead of Daniel, I don't know. Um, I do it. It's Danny. Um, I think you got to keep them together. For the Montreal show, I think they they're gonna get a huge pop. The three of them together. Oh yeah. Oh, two point oh and thing. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I think you keep them together. Uh, somebody who couldn't keep it together. <laughs> oh my god, this match! I've had so many arguments about it. Moxley versus Phoenix. Who wants to destroy it? So my first thought actually was like, oh my God, I can't believe they're making Moxley like a transitional champion. And then I thought to myself, well, maybe kind of makes sense because Mox or uh, Cassidy was a face. 
and if you wanted to get it over to another face. But obviously, that's not the way that uh, that it was intended and things planned out the way that they did. So the one question that I only have is like, how bad must have Moxley been feeling at that moment? Because I understand when uh, Sasha dropped it to Willow. Because if you like, what was that knee, right? Or an ankle or something that had to do with yes. your leg. You feel those injuries. When your shit gets blown out, your shit gets blown out. Like, you know. Like, fuck, I can't stand up. Oh, my God. Sorry for the swearing, everybody. But, uh, like, Moxley must have felt like, yo, I'm not going to be back here for the next couple of months to call that kind of an audible and be like, yo, take this belt off me like this second. Otherwise, they could have just finished the match and then figured a way out of it later. Yeah, I... I want to sit there and I want to point fingers. I wasn't there. I'm not in the position to make those calls. I'm not Rick Knox. I don't know if the second move that really rattled him was necessary. I think a simple roll up would have sufficed. Um, if he's injured, get him the fuck out of there. So Sorry. there are so people. So people are actually saying there was actually the dive. That knocked him out first. He, and I saw that, okay? He comes, Moxley wants to go right up on the ramp. They start scrapping. Mox comes off the ramp and a big-ass Santon right on him. Now, if you looked at the distance that Phoenix ran, we're going to talk maybe 15 feet, 12 to 15 feet, running dive into it. And if you watch how he takes it, Mox tries to get out of the way and just push on his head. But then his back takes it right to the face. And, and it wasn't and you like could a see him. shot. It was a boom, boom. And he didn't move for a couple of seconds, like, period. Either. And we're like, watching. Mom. At that moment, I think I said it to you. You see Phoenix run over. And in wrestling, if you give him the two fingers and they squeeze, there's he's okay. They're, he was ready to go. But you see Phoenix make that motion. And I was like, Oh my gosh, th that actually did rattle him. Then you see Mox for the next two minutes, kind of playing sloppy. You can't tell if he's selling cause he's that good. He can sell it. But then at one point it's almost like he wakes up and he's like, all right, I'm back. Let's go. And they start having the match. Now with, Concussions, Sid Crosby's probably the perfect example, took the nasty concussion and came back a couple days later, just gets a just a bump out. He was out for a season and a half, I believe, if not longer. Um, okay, okay. Now, if he took the rattling off the Santon and then he takes that driver once, obviously his head's rattled. I see Mox making the call here. He's telling the ref because he was out cold. Oh, you he can hear him. You can hear him. Yeah, you yeah. can hear him yelling. So where does Mo uh, Knox, Rick Knox, have the power to say, no, he shouldn't take that finisher again? So then he rattles him again. Well, and, I don't, I don't yeah. really think that that's a Rick Knox call. I think what Rick Knox should have done is what at least – WWE if referees are, are instructed to do, and that's if they're not getting up, you just count that three. Yes. I yes. I, I, I think that, you know, that that he should have did that. I get maybe why he didn't. I mean, we, we like Rick Knox has been a referee for a long time. The difference is he hasn't been a TV referee for a long time. So there's going to be some things that he he's not, you know, he's not going to think about, which, which okay, is, you know, but yeah, I, I think he should have just counted the three regardless. And, you know, because yeah, he didn't, there was no need to keep the match going. Um, you know, I just, I, I didn't, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't get why he just didn't count the three, to be honest. And what well, did Justin, what does our favorite referee say? Well, I mean, that's what Jimmy Corderas also always says. Jimmy Corderas always said, that's a WWE thing. You always count to three. It's not up to, it's not the ref. It's not the it's the reformer's job to kick out. It's not the referee's job to stop. But again, I mean, as I said, that's a W. As I said, that's a WWE call. We don't know what the AEW refs are instructed to do. Maybe 
they are told to, maybe they're told to finish behind the scenes and it's like you have to follow it to this exact moment no matter what. If something happens, so they very well could be told that. From my understanding, that's exactly it. He knew that wasn't the ending. So he was confused why Moxley didn't kick out and Moxley had to tell him again. And then they went home again. Um I um you know I, I don't know why like I don't I don't know why he why Fien, um why they just didn't like like I think Dusty said do a roll up. Yep. Or or you know, or do do something you know with less I mean, I, I mean, Moxley said probably didn't hit on the second one, but with less impact on the body as a whole. Yeah, can't argue there. But you know what? Like, honestly, I find a lot of wrestling, especially AEW, just suck at improv. They just friggin' suck at it. Because I but, mean, uh, he, when, when he didn't hit the three, it killed the crowd. Yeah. Because they started yeah. doing. Yeah, I think they, we were thinking the same thing. We were like, wait, what the fuck? What the frick? What the frick? But it um, hurts. Of course, we saw the pictures at the trailer. All the people that mattered to Mox standing there. I uh, hope he's okay. Hope recovery doesn't take too long. So that's another one that we spoke about injury. There's another one gone. Um, Phoenix is now the champion, which is wild. Take it to Mexico and feud with QT. I don't, I don't hate it. Yeah, I, I'm trying to find a way to shit on it. <laughs> but I mean, but I say at this point, I mean, to be honest, I say at this point, just let Phoenix run with it. I mean, if Mox is ready to go next week, I think at this point, you just kind of go with it and let the let Phoenix just go out there and do what Orange Cassidy did and just have banger after banger after banger, which we all know Phoenix is capable of doing. If Mox is ready to go next week, I still say, Tony, you give that guy his vacation he was supposed to have a year ago. Yep, I agree with yeah. that. 100%. Yeah, I agree with all of that. The next match, obviously, because of the ending, like Urai says, the crowd was lost. And you get Soraya versus Tony. Now I want to go into it. Tony's entrance. By God, that was excellent. And I think I figured something out. The portrait of a wrestler with RJ City and Tony Storm. Urai, we've watched RJ for years. Yep. Do you not see it? See what? They're working together on her gimmick. Possibly. It reeks of RJ City's panage. The black and whites, the playing off the characters, the, my God, I'm into it. Maybe RJ can give her the babyface gimmick. Who is babyface? Where did babyface go? What if he becomes the valet? I mean, I don't care what RJ yeah. City does. As long as he gets FaceTime on TV, I'm happy. I like an idea of a valet. I like the idea of him being there uh, or behind the scenes because something is happening between the two of them. And I'm into it. I can't stop gushing about her. Uh, my daughter, who's been in and out of wrestling for a while... She stayed up and watched the whole show with me for this match. This is the match that she was most excited for. I had no reason not to want to see it go. Um, I think Soraya should have won it. Tony's going to go a little more mad. I think it plays to the character. And this L makes her even stronger. The yeah. shoe spot... I was in tears. I I got to be honest. I want the shirt. I think the chin up, tits out, watch out for the shoes is so good. She comes in the ring with three of them. The ref takes two. She's got one hit in there. Hits her with it. You think it's over one, two, three. We think 
that, okay, this makes sense. This would be a good role. But now we get more entertainment out of her. The crowd was really into it, too. Yeah. Like By the, the like end the of it, everything she was doing, the star, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's so good, she's overshadowing the actual outcast breakup. Like, who cares about that storyline? Let's just focus on Tony. Yeah, and they have to. Now we get to the last match. Now, MJF versus Joe. The story's great. Is MJF injured? What? Where, why do you think MJF is injured? I actually heard that today, but I didn't actually watch the video. I just yeah, I, 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 think, I, think, I think he's, he's, he's working hurt, but I don't. But I, I think it's just your typical, like he's banged up. He's not actually like yeah, injured. Okay. He tweeted out that like this super face um, promo piece on his Twitter X or whatever you want to call it, and he mentioned that he's. He's working injured for his people. He is the voice of these people. Blah, 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 blah. Awesome. So we get to the match. And they open with Justin. What did I mean, they that, open with? I mean, they open with uh, exact recreation of the Bret Hart spot where he has a kid. Oh, I loved it. But, but then the punchline is he tells the kid he's adopted. And then he comes out with this coat that has every New York sports team, including, and he went so deep. I heard this on a podcast. This is my own discovery. But he, a logo he had on there was from a lacrosse team that actually hasn't been around since 2009. But he went to the effort of including that lacrosse team on his jacket, too. Easter eggs. He loves to give us this stuff. Tank, tell me about the match. Loved it. Um, Joe is like so methodical with his movements, and he's very believable, obviously, as somebody who you would not honestly want to fight. And um, I love that he's like so wide that that belt looks like a friggin' boy on his shoulder. And uh, honestly, man, it's so crazy how, like, the highlight that still stands out the most to me is that stupid kangaroo kick. He does this and everybody goes crazy. Like, I still don't even understand how this is the thing. <laughs> and it works so well. It, I pop too. Yeah. <laughs> we wanted to see the transition and the go forth as face. And, and we all know that it's all going to build to him snapping one day. He's so good as a heel that when he does go back there, it will be good. I know. Also, but, you know what? Sorry. To, oh God, I did it again. I'm so sorry, Dusty. You're good. The promo thing the bread that Justin uh, mentioned about Bret Hart, isn't that also like Bret Hart did it to spoof? Uh, Lawrence Taylor, wasn't it? Like it was a New York uh, oh. mean, mean Mo Mean Joe Green. Mean, mean Joe that. Green, yeah. Yeah. Where he throws him the jersey instead of the scarf or whatever. Yeah. Because I didn't even realize Bret Hart did it again. Yeah. That's how I remembered it. I really liked this match. Joe absolutely destroyed him that uh when he took the, I'm trying to think if it was a suplex. What was the move that he did where he dropped them on the side of the ring? The back suplex. Okay. So he did grab him. And then the way MJF folded. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. It was brutal. The match was so freaking fun. The maniacal laughing out of Joe. I was like, it, it's it's fun. It's fun. Now, the one thing I want to get to, we get to Adam Cole. All right, he's going to sleep. Oh, no, Adam Cole comes running. This, I got to get my friend. I got to support. And he jumps off the ramp in that same fucking ramp that Phoenix jumped off. And all of a sudden, we all see it. We all saw it immediately. He jumped off the ramp, twisted his ankle. We didn't see the ankle being twisted, 
But when he started limping to the ring, we all knew. We're like, shit, there's another one. Yep. Off of something so simple. Didn't uh, didn't uh, Punk hurt himself jumping into the crowd at one point? Yeah, he did. Like, yeah. Cool. It was fun. Like, fun. So he gets in there, and I mean, the timing of this sucked because I think his spot to come out was a little sooner, and the ref already put his hand up to one. We didn't get the second one. It started building. It was slowed down. Had to get Adam Cole there to cheer him on to get the third one. I wish the timing there was a little better. But this is where it gets interesting. He's our scumbag, so he's now going to use the ring when it's necessary. Ref catches the ring, but then he goes with, I believe he got punk on this one at one point, didn't he? Where he took the chain to his throat and then put the sleeper over. Who else did he do that to? He did, the he did. I think, the ring to Darby Allen and gave him a headlock takeover. That's right. It was Darby Allen. That's right, with the headlock takeover. So then he's choking him with the chain, then throws on the sleeper, puts him out. All right. How heelish, but still playing face with the crowd. Yep. Doesn't this really blur these lines, Uri? Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I think the lines have been blurred for years. I mean, if if you look back to to Steve Austin, was he a heel or was he a babyface? Yeah, but well, what was the Rock when the Rock was at his height? Was he a heel or was he a babyface? And and we all know Hogan uh, wasn't afraid to scratch a back, right? Um, so it, you know, it, it's it's just a situation where you know the the line the lines have always, I think been blurred um or i shouldn't say always but for since at least the attitude era um so i mean you know it's not it's it's nothing new i i think it depends on on who it is and how you go about it um you know and uh obviously in in new york mgf can can uh get away with it it, it it's you know um it's kind of like, uh, you know, going back to the Eddie and Claudio match. I was really confused when Eddie was chopping Claudio and he wasn't selling. And Eddie was kind of backing up a little bit. And I was like, well, who's the heel and who's the baby face here? Um, you know, that won't, you know, but when we look at the way that MJF did it, um, the crowd went nuts for it because they were in his home state. Yeah. I do want to go right back to the match that you were talking about with that spot. I really enjoyed it because he hit him with those simple chops, hit him with the harder ones. It wasn't going, but then it kicked to like uh, Eddie Kingston's stiff punch. Yes. Man, that looked good. And then you got the same effect out of the European. So we've got these smaller moves to really chop you down. Yeah. But if we want to at any given time, we can put you down. I go back to the Eddie and Claudio. I may actually rewatch the match because I want to look for a little more Easter egg hunting. But as we get to the end of this match, Joe takes the L. You get Hopalong Cassidy into the ring. Oh, broken foot. He's hopping, he's hopping, puts up the hand. Joe comes over. You get the handshake. Um, that also happened with Claudio and Eddie. We looked right past that. These two matches being on opposite sides of the show really have contrast that kind of well, gives me a bookend. I, I, th I think with the Eddie and Claudio, uh, Eddie, -o, Eddie and Claudio one. I like Eddie. -o. Um, <laughs> you know, that it was respect, but it was also that's the code of honor. Yeah. Whereas the Samoa Joe one was really yes, Joe saying, put over. You, yes. you, you got me. Yeah. Um, and, and I liked how, MJ, how he was going to go after Cole and MJF got in the middle. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's those things that like, you know, you know, eventually a turn's coming. And then who, and, and you're still sitting there going, when's it going to happen? Um, but yeah, I, I, I liked it. I think, um, as a whole, the show was paced really well. And I hope that they, when they do their, because I'm, I'm assuming 
I have read a rumor today that, that they're going to do a December pay-per-view on December 29th. If that is not the winter is coming show, then they're probably going to do winter is coming at the beginning of December. And I hope that show is paced like grand slam was. Yeah. I, I leading into grand slam, I wasn't afraid to look away on dynamite and rampage and collision. I followed the matches with the guys that I had to. I I can't look away, guys. But there's a lot that I can look away. Um, Now we're missing. We don't know yet. We don't know if it's just a boo-boo and he's going to walk it off. But Adam Cole, we saw it on crutches. Um, We got Mox out. I think this is a good time for it releases came there's more tv time available let's push some guys let's get them on the camera and see what they can do um there's a lot of guys on the roster that can fill the shoes i think tony uh it's the first time he it's a good reason he's overhired i mean i you know i i i think guys need to from like people that own companies need to stop over hiring um, because it hurts, you know, n- not depending on who you are in the AW and the AEW standpoint. Because I mean, if you're if, if if you're not a top guy, I mean, Mox can still go work elsewhere. But if you, if you're not a top guy, you can kind of go wherever you want, uh, as long as you're not um, interfering with, with with one of their shows. Um, but it hurts WWE talent because they they don't have that that, that ability and. Uh, you know, and, and I know that they do house shows and AEW doesn't, and that plays a part in it, in it, in it a little bit. But I, I just wish that people weren't overhiring so that everyone got a spot on, on television. Because there yeah. was a time in the, you know, and, and uh, you know, we talk about the Attitude Era, but I mean, you look at the Attitude Era, and everyone was mostly on TV once a week, whether it be Raw, SmackDown, Metal, or uh, Heat. And everyone looked like like a star. I think there's and, a way to do it, in all honesty. Pardon? I think there is a way to do it. Oh yeah. I mean, the the fact that 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 you took Kai and Tai and made them look like stars towards the end of their run shows that that it could happen. I mean, I remember. And maybe you guys don't, but I mean, I, I remember just Joe being a thing yeah. with, with Joe legend where, well, what's your name? Well, it's Joe. Well, Joe, what? Well, just Joe, you know? And I mean, he didn't last very long, but I remember it. I remember Austin beating him up at Unforgiven. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's, you know, it, you got to, you got to tailor, tailor your rosters to how many people you actually need. Yes, injuries happen, so you're always going to have those those ten extra people on the roster. But you got to make everyone have a spot as much as you can. And I and I think because there's so many people on the WWE roster and on the AEW roster, it just doesn't it it doesn't work out that way. You look at Impact's roster, and almost everyone is on every TV taping or pay per view. So I'm going to pop in on this. So when you look at Impact, Anthem has to make money. When you look at WWE, now you can really say money is the bottom line. Numbers are going to matter because there's a corporate structure to it. Right. AEW doesn't really have that. They answer to Warner Brothers at times, but when they get streaming, they they might be able to figure out a way. Obviously, their overseas are good. Hold on. Um and Tony Khan wants everybody getting their paychecks. I think there is a overstaff for sure, but I don't think that's a bad idea to be giving guys jobs and keeping them working for when you need them. I think the whole idea of having a whole enterprise behind you based on you giving people jobs is something amazing to have that is not seen very often in any line of work. 
you can agree on that census. But I'm not disappointed. I, I, I want to see everybody on TV, sure, but I don't need everybody on TV. If somebody's off TV and then we get the chance to see them at Neo, hey, let's go. Right. And and, and I agree with you on that. But let, let's use Spears for an example. So he so let's assume so let's say um you know, since he's been back, he hasn't really been on TV. No. He came back, he did that that TNT title stuff, and then he hasn't really been on TV other than All Out. Um, so let's assume next week Tony's like, okay, I have an idea, and this is what we're going to do with you, and we're, we're going to give you a solid push. Does anyone care now? It's the same thing with, with Action and Dreddy. He, he beat Jericho and then did nothing. If they go back to him, then no one's going to care. And, and it's not the fact that um, it, it didn't work out. It's the fact that there's so many people on TV, he got lost in the shuffle. I don't know. I, I didn't care. His second match, I didn't care. <laughs> I right. think when it comes to Spears. No, I'm, I'm using... I'm, you, don't no, and I'm, I'm going to follow it. Um, with Spears, and then look at Action Andretti. Spears was brought in with Cody in mind. They've tried to give him anything they could. It just didn't get over on the TV from the scale that they expected. Cody right. gone. He still is respected for what he's done at AEW. So he still has the job and can come in when he can. Action Andretti was brought in by somebody else. And for very sure. big age difference. But I'm, but, but yeah, but you can't. You can't. I, really I, I, say I'm going to jump on you here for a sec. You can't say you can't because Sorry. they do and they can. But I mean, you have a 42 year old guy that's the top merch seller in WWE. Okay. So will Spear is Spears LA Knight? No. That's the difference. LA Knight was meant to be on WWE. Right, we I saw it that. early on in the impact stuff when he was killing the yeah uh, dummies. But this and is one. yeah, go ahead, sorry. That was guaranteed good stuff on a bigger audience. It took time for him to get noticed to where he needed to be. He was pushed aside two, three times on TV, mm -hmm. and then they pushed it. He got it. Okay. Yep. Spears isn't him. Spears can't talk like he does. Spears doesn't have, like, catchphrases that he does. Spears has had the camera time. But that's Be why I said, don't you, I'm, I'm, I'm like, because you went in on Spears when I said Spears. That's why I said, I'm just using Spears as an example. I'm not, that's not meant to, like, go in and be like, well, why is he not getting those spots? It's just using him as an example. And Sky can be, Sky Scorpio Sky can be used there. Ethan Page can be used there. Exactly. All guys who can absolutely work. I think Ethan Page might be a little hard on this one because he does have charisma yep. and he can really show it in ring without needing a mic. But, but the other two are sound wrestlers, great wrestlers, great looks. But what else can you do with that when you're on a show that highlights the Orange Cassidy's, the kangaroo kicks and... But right. But, but the best when, thing they ever, the best thing they ever had with Sean Spears was when he was MJF's manager. Why can't they have a guy like that? You could have more of these guys being doing manager roles too. When when he was with Tully, and Tully was gone due to the COVID time, Spears was doing his own TSN thing where he was a hockey analyst type character. Do you guys remember this? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. He refuted with Dustin. It was so good, and I've been begging for it. And then he was doing some funny stuff, and I actually think he was getting over, and then they put him back with Tully, and then it disappeared. I, I think that was before Tully. The The TSN stuff was before Pinnacle. Okay, yeah, it was. Um, but No, it was the underwear thing where he was entertaining, and yeah, that's right. Right. Either way, I know it was during COVID and he needed to uh, highlight something and he had an idea and they gave it to him. to him. I don't know why it's gone. If they still have QTV with John well, Morrison they, existing, why They had not? a bigger idea for him, right? The pinnacle yeah. is supposed to be a bigger thing, right? 
Um, but I, I, you know, like you brought up Scorpio Sky, which I agree yeah. with. But I mean, I remember when Scorpio Sky, maybe not the first time, but at least the second time, he won the TNT title and those fans went nuts. Yeah. Well, it was it was his time and we were behind it. But on that title reign, it was lost instantly. Do you believe that? Um, yeah, because they were on eventually they were on the Wardlow and then we were all on the Wardlow train. But I mean, where where's Wardlow now? Fickle, fickle, fickle. Yeah, where is Wardlow? It, it, and, and that's it. Like, and that's what I mean. Like, you know, um, this is why you don't like, un, like, you know, like I said, you're always going to have more guys than you need because injuries happen and you need guys to fill spots. But this is why you don't over, over hire. Because then these guys don't get spots. And if you take them off of TV for too long, then they come back and a lot of times fans don't care anymore. This is now the, the second or third time they've done that to Wardlow. How many times are you going to do that to him and then the fans don't care anymore? Oh, I, I can't argue anything about Wardlow. He, it was his time. They should have pushed it. Uh, in fact, I think it's a Punk issue that caused it not to happen because he was supposed to face Punk for the belt and then Punk got injured, so then he was gone. And then he said he didn't want to take it unless he got the true champion. But then it all disappeared. All of that storyline disappeared. Right. But, I mean, he hasn't been back since he lost the TNT title. No, he hasn't. So, again, and and if and if that's what you're building to, if you're building to him to come back to, to take it off Luchasaurus, okay. But you just did that with him when he took it off of Hawks. So, all in all, let's turn the TNT into the TMT. It's the melt. It's the meat title. <laughs> and let's just start getting the big meters to have some feuds. Yeah. Their own weight class, their own title. It starts with uh, Luchasaurus. You got Keith Lee could have a great meat match. You could even bring in John Silver as a gimmick of being the meat man. And then he'd get squashed by one of these big boys. I, I see it going for some good length of time. I would like to see that. Um, what was Progress's big man title called? The Atlas title. Yeah. They... You guys used to watch PWG. Do you guys yep. remember Brian Cage versus John Silver? Where John, uh, Cage was doing all the clippy shit and Silver was doing all the big man spots? I have, I did not see that match that I remember. It's a great little match. But they get, like, to your point, they get you Silver in that kind of role. The delusional yeah. big man. I like it, and I it like would it work. Too. But, I, but I, I, Brian Cage gets over those two big bastards with the trios title in ROH. Yeah. Get over. I I think that that could be a nice little uh, spot. Yeah, but I mean, Keith Lee's another guy, right? Yeah. So I mean, it's you know, and I and I still stand by the ideal of if you have time on TV, get yourself over. Right, and I agree. I, and I um, think AEW has done that with countless guys. We're looking on the negatives on certain guys, but there's Orange Cassidy took it and ran. Right. Absolutely. He did. Um, you know, I, I hope that with these releases, he doesn't go after everybody. Do I, if, if I'm smart, am I signing Ziggler? Yeah. Mm. If, if Ziggler still wants to wrestle, who knows? Right. Cause he was ready to walk away from wrestling a while ago. And then WWE, talked him into staying so maybe he doesn't want to wrestle anymore who knows but if he does i hope that's the only guy that that they take because and, they have and if he people. does he'll be on the cruise right and yes. well maybe but yeah for your sake yeah yes. um but like they have a hundred mustafa Ali's. they have no. um you know they have a hundred you know other guys that got released no shelton they have a hundred shelton benjamins yeah they have you know so i they, they don't need those guys but they Ziggler? need a guy like Edge. No, I don't even really want Edge going. No, I I think they need that right now. I I, I, I want if if they're gonna do an Edge and Christian reunion, I'm okay with it. Just, I but think just give us, uh, with but I don't uh, run. Punk being gone, that really left a stain on the locker room and an Edge signing. I don't care what he does; just be in the company, do some fun stuff. And I think that would really give us some stock back into the value because the whole punk situation is a bruised eye on this uh, this 
promotion and it will be until they answer to it. Give me a five second pose and call it a day. Okay. I'm all right with that. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I'm all I right with it. See, I, I do want to see if they do it. I do want to see Edwin Christian versus FTR. Yes. Um, I, I, you know, maybe the Bucks. Um, I yeah. don't want to see Edge and Christian versus the Hardys. <laughs> uh, I, I don't really care for seeing Edge and Christian versus the Lucha Bros. Um, but there, but there's a few tag teams at, at the top that, yeah, okay. You we'll know. exit AEW for now because you're on a topic that makes me lead to the next. Mm -hmm. Impact 1,000 episodes. I just watched 1,001. I haven't um, watched the second yet. I'll be doing that after the show. I'm um, spoiling it for you. No, we did have a lot of fun with a return of a tag team. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're not going to give us the FTR match. But man, was it fun to see Devon there again. I I read that Devon wanted to start wrestling again. I hope he does not. I, uh, we've I, seen I, what it's going to be. It's going to be a fun show. Stop trying to work a five-star. It doesn't exist in this age group. Let's just have fun with yeah. it. If if they're going to go out there and have fun and have like a five-minute match, okay. Yeah. But but there were times, and I know that he hasn't wrestled in a while, and I, and I'm, and I get that. But there were times where he was kind of stumbling. Yeah. And at 52 years old, or 51 years old, whatever he is, it's like, do you still got to do it? And the if you, and I get that. And if you want to have one last match, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. But I don't think with his health, he needs a run. No. I, I said to my daughter about the sickness because we were talking about Tiberius King, she didn't understand why he would still be wrestling and why Neo makes so many different transitions when it comes back. And I tried to explain what it's like for a worker to get the pop, the excitement, the got to watch the wrestler with her one day, but it's that search for that one more. It's, I mean, we see it with Matt and Jeff and it's, it hurts. But they're doing it right. They're taking a lot of L's right now. So let's see what happens. Yeah. I mean, Jeff's yeah. drug of yeah. choice is a real drug, yeah. but. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was, that was messed up. All right. As we come to the end of the show, wrapping it up, let's talk about it. Tank, how was your shows? They were really cool, actually. Um, a buddy of mine was doing his first time doing, well, second time doing stand-up, but first time getting to do a show with, like, a friend, friend. So, uh, that was awesome. Uh, went off pretty well. Uh, Saturday night, uh, was a little different. There was two acoustic, like, folk acts. And then there was, like, a death tone type of, like, metal band. And the band after them was like heavy metal, but they did like all ticket fart jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they were freaking awesome. And uh, yeah, and then I went up and did hip hop, and it was like so out of place, but worked, and everybody was into it. What else really did? Good to hear. Good to hear. Do you have yeah. anything popping up this weekend? Myself? Yes. Laying low for a little bit. I'm uh, yeah. moving in the, the beginning of the month, so I'm just packing stuff up here and getting nice. ready to do that and then pick stuff up once the move is over. I'm going to be sitting still for a bit. I think I might have to check out the MWO show in Welland. I don't know about the uh, one in Hamilton, but you got Jesse Bieber versus Tarek on both. Uh Bia is going to be against Del Bruno on that MWO card. I kind of want to see that match. But uh, that's on uh, in October, I think, the 7th. Uh, yep. What do you guys got for this weekend, Uri? Justin, are you guys going to CWF? No, nope, I don't think so. I, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to go to CWF on Sunday. Uh, you know, 
see what happens because uh, it's local and I it's easy to get there. Yes. Um, but I am going uh, this Saturday and Sunday is Hamilton Comic Con. Um, they got uh, Demolition, Powers of Pain, uh, Tony Atlas, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, uh, and um, who I'm going to see, Abdullah the Butcher. Nice. Um, and then also Saturday, I'm going over to the state side of Niagara Falls and going to see ESW. Uh, they're bringing in uh, Scotty Tuhati. And uh, he's facing your favorite, Dusty Greg- Gregory Iron. Oh. And uh, the main event is uh, Vince Valor versus Bill Collier for the number of internship for the ESW uh, heavyweight title held by Kevin Bennett. Love me some Bennett, man. He just rapped the other day over a sick Mario beat. And I was just like, this guy's so much fun. The things he goes with, it's always video game and entertainment, but guy's talented, great in ring. So that sounds like it's the dusty finish. Until we see each other next week, keep on keeping on.